What is up lads? Welcome back to another episode of my Jerusalem playthrough. Uh, this is actually the beginning of another recording session here for me IRL and I know many of you probably don't care about that but I just wanted to take a moment to reflect here guys. Um, we have almost 3,000 development and uh, considering we started as a one province minor, that is not bad dude. We're doing pretty well. Like imagine if you started as the Teutonic Order and formed Prussia, and you were the size of the Commonwealth at this stage of the game. Obviously, you've got some things to uh, benefit you, like your ridiculously nice ideas. But, uh, you know, I mean, I could probably do better, but I'm just saying that that is not bad. Now, my point is that we are way larger than the Commonwealth in terms of development. And um, then when we combine that with the fact of our, our Diplo game has, I would say, um, officially gone through the roof. We're having a really good Diplo game. And uh, when we consider that it is it was not really that luck-based, I suppose the most lucky thing is that if Spain PU'd France as well. But honestly, guys, we could have broken these two alliances by um, calling Spain in against somebody and attacking France or something like that. It's possible. And uh, then use Spain against France. And we could have started expanding into this region. That was actually my plan. So although that was lucky, I don't want to get crazy and be like, that was really lucky. I actually think our luck overall throughout the course of this game has not been that good. And um, this, uh, you know, I've mentioned uh, we took the dynasty. Uh, I knew it was going to be difficult to actually pull it off. And it was. But we did it. And uh, yeah, our diplomacy really saved the game. I don't know if you guys would say that's luck or not. Or the favors we have and the fact that the Commonwealth would help us against uh, the Spanish. But um, what I'm trying to say is we've really brute forced it. And we're having uh, officially having a really good game despite the odds. And I'm pretty proud of myself, honestly. Uh, now, we do have the potential to PU Portugal as well. It's a little bit of a funny one, though, because, um, you know, Portugal has lost some development here. And uh, we can see here that he's not that high, much over 100% war score cost. So I think if we got the other two admin efficiencies at admin tech 27, we'd actually be able to fully annex him, which is going to be able to deal with him in one war as opposed to PUing him, which will deal with him in one war as well. But we would have to integrate him before the end of the game if we wanted to get the world conquest because of his colonies. Um, so yeah, not that significant. Um, you know, uh, he'd probably be way over 100% over extension though to fully annex him, which is something we might be able to avoid. Uh, the Imperialism CB is another thing that's going to reduce his war score cost. Um, so we could definitely do that. Maybe with just one more admin efficiency at 23. Yeah, maybe both our ticks are at 23. We can we could pull that off. So PUing him, a little bit meh. And uh, speaking of which, we have so much to integrate through diplomacy. I was a little bit uh, torn about... Great, GB is really strong right now, and I was thinking about you know the potential of PUing him. But we are going to go ahead and rival him instead. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and break my relations with him. And we're going to switch it over to Scandinavia. Just considering Scandinavia has a Swedish tradition. So if he took the, um, the correct event, uh, he's strong right now. He's strong. So he can help us out in the meantime. Um, but yeah, look at this. Look at that, guys. That reconquest. That's interesting. That's a way we can like amplify our Diplo game as well. Maybe I shouldn't have bothered. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have bothered allying Scandinavia. He's actually allied to the Commonwealth. We can just break that at any time. Um, but yeah, let, let's go to war. Well, actually, there's one other thing I wanted to do, and that's take points from the estates. We can take it from. We can take admin and Diplo points, and we need them. So let's do that. This should be easy. If we do that, that's 45, 50, 60. Yeah. We'll just go like this. What? That lied to me. It's supposed to give 15. How rude.
How rude. Give me those admin points. Could have sworn they, those each give 15. No, because it gives 10. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder if it changes or why that is. Maybe religious ideas or something. I'm not sure. Um, could have sworn they both give 15, but maybe I'm dumb. Okay, uh, now this, we basically need 20, which I can get easily by taking these two. But um, I need to get the burgers to be uh, slightly increased relations. We actually, we like our influence in Ragusa. How about I add that? There we go. And... Oh, that's 15, you dummy. Wow. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add more of our provinces to the burgers because we can actually benefit from them. And that will increase the influence like that. I remember we had some trouble here and we removed them, so... Also influence and constant. Yeah, this could increase for sure. Let's add that. So we might get social mobility. What can you do? All right. T took some points there. Um, yeah, cool. Cool. We're doing well. We've got these guys on lockdown. So the biggest issue right now is probably the fact that we have two loans and uh, six corruption. But, you know, it's something we can handle. It's something we can manage for sure. And uh, I'll show you what my next war is going to be. Maybe it was futile allying Scandinavia there. Perhaps that was a mistake, actually. Because uh, I plan to use this reconquest into Scandinavia. Um, yeah. So we just got a truce there for pretty much no reason. A little bit dumb. Oh, well. Our diplomacy is perfectly fine. Yeah, in fact, that Diplo slot is about to be used with Denmark, guys, because I'm going to declare this war here. So the Emperor of Bohemia will not back him up, but as you can see, East Frisia and Denmark will back up Flanders. Now, if we attack Flanders, we can take his two colonies here, and then I can vassalize Denmark. That seems like something worth doing whilst we are uh, at uh, sort of a period where I've spent most of my admin points. Um, I'm wondering, though, is it worth taking some of this high dev and giving it to France? We're going to have to integrate it. Man, we've got a lot to integrate. Probably not. Probably not worth it. So I'll use the Colonial CB. We can just spend it with admin. I'm feeling like uh, we're doing just fine in terms of uh, being able to swallow the rest of the world. So that's the war goal that we're going to grab, and uh, we want somebody to go grab Denmark, who is literally one province minor, guys, and uh, he's going to be our new subject. So we'll break this alliance on the 12th of December. God dang coalition. So we just got a five years truce with him for, for no reason, because that was dumb. And uh, how's the coalition look? These guys are rejoining, so I might actually declare if we can make it to the end of the month on the Mamelukes as well. It's going to be interesting to see. And uh, yeah, obviously hoping France and someone help us smash this war. So surprisingly, they left the coalition, but... This one war was enough to where they're like, ha ha, we are strong enough. Or it might be our diplomacy weakening. That's what it probably was. It's the fact that we lost Great Britain as an ally there. They think they're, they're strong enough. But I managed to declare on the uh, Mamelukes before they joined the coalition, so that's good. And uh, that gives us some, if we separate this guy, Rassids, that gives us some more land some more clay to take and uh the ability to gain more influence over the alexandria trading region which is good real good feels good man i'm really sort of basking in the glory of this game guys feels real good it's gonna be nice to wait do i seriously not have a general here oopsie daisies where is our, one of our other generals that we could use? The six maneuver one. Um, it's going to feel good to get that imperialism CB finally. That's what I was trying to say. 
but this is going to give us access. Flanders being pretty good about giving us access, but we are officially going to have access through West Africa after this war. And uh, who has some troops nearby? Do I have to walk over to Denmark myself, or that's what I'm wondering, or is somebody going to do that for us? Looks like actually the Spanish are the closest, so I'm just going to make that a war goal for Spain. Yeah, 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 coalition. I did uh, know, I did consider the fact that if we don't go against uh, the Ottomans, that they have the opportunity to join the coalition, but... What can you do? I kind of suspect that the coalition will yet again diminish. Frick. Flanders is being mean to me. How rude. I don't think our CB, no, it doesn't count for those colonies. So maybe it does count for some of these, though. Anything that we're bordering. The fuck? I'm at war with Mang. Feels bad, man. That's the second time that this has happened. It doesn't tell you that he's a tributary state when you're declaring the war. <sighs> I'm really pissed off about that. I'm wondering now, is it going to matter, though? We might be able to get the war score against him anyway. God dang it, that's so bad. BS. Well, let, let's not um, bother, I suppose, with any uh, navy aspirations around here, like raiding. Because we're at war with the Ming Navy. That's why the coalition's growing as well. We're at war with Ming. Ah, uh, that's so irritating. They better patch that. Okay, I'm wondering, is there other colonies apart from this that we can take? It doesn't look like it. So, these troops... We should only need one stack here to kind of stabilize the region, region I suggest. I realize that's in the trading company, but it's not being converted. We can fix that. I'm sad. Fighting Ming, you know, when it's not my intention, that's really, uh, really rude. Okay, so I want to go up here and try to do stuff like defend myself and uh, go continue this war if possible. Now Denmark's a one province minor guys so we were going for that vassalization of him cost 41 diplo points. That's the plan but I might go up here and get Flanders capital etc. I would be happy with these two then I guess which is only two war score. So like I said despite the fact that we're fighting Ming if we rush up there sit on his capital etc we should be fine but I also want to try to get Denmark before we, uh, before we peace out. God, it's so annoying. Again, uh, I want to try to demonstrate it. Maybe it did show it. See, it says it here, guys. Do you see that? Look at this. This is a tributary state of Ming. Right-click, declare war. And it says they are subject to Ming, which will protect them. But it doesn't show their allies being called to war, uh, Ming. Uh, it's really frustrating um, because in that kind of scenario, like I genuinely didn't consider Flanders would be his tributary, you know, as they are all the way over here, and um, it came as a shock. 
and a surprise and, and I just glanced over it. My eyes, you know, they look at this and they don't look at that because it's just a little more uh, clear. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit uh, disturbed that that just happened, but it's it's not that game changing. Should be just fine. Spain does actually seem to be responding, and that's a fort level one. Sweet. Hopefully, you can sort this out for us quickly because I'm quite far away myself. Commonwealth is the papal controller, <gasps> but we claim. The weak claim. The weak claim. Huh. Huh. My ears so so inconveniently aged though. He's old enough to where we won't have regency if we killed our killed our ruler, but we uh, but he'll be young, incredibly young, if he comes of age. I have the option to hit this button, which would rip stats. <laughs> I don't want to do that, but maybe I should. That's six admin. I want it so badly, guys. It's, the thing is. So, so let's break this down for people who don't understand. The thing is, he has Habsburg dynasty and a weak claim. He's got a young heir with a weak claim. His ruler is young. His government type is non-issue. This guy's not going to be unelected or anything. Which means there's a long period here where he's going to have a weak claim. If I press this button, we don't have an heir or we have an age zero heir. Either or. If we don't have an ear, within a few years we should get an ear. Now, if in the next 10 years or so I can kill my ruler by making him a uh, general, he's already a general. Henry. Okay. Um. Then our empress rules the country who is Habsburg. Now, if she dies, she's fairly old. It shouldn't be too hard to get another Habsburg by royally marrying one of these three. We have three opportunities to get a Habsburg. Um, then we, while we're in Regency, the Queen claims this throne. <sighs> oh God, I think he doesn't have any diplo uh, any colonization ideas, does he? No. Yeah, and then we wouldn't have to integrate him, guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. 6-5. Oh my goodness. I want it that badly, I 6-5. 6-5, rip. Rip. Feels bad, man. God dang it. <sighs> I want it. I'm greedy. <clears throat> the thing about the Commonwealth, guys, this is, you know, I always intended to PU him. The thing about him is if we take him out, that's 500 war score costs we can take out in one war. And I don't even need to worry about integrating him. There's no need to integrate him. And that's really cool. I can kind of def divide the world with the Commonwealth. Uh, we don't really tread on his toes. Like, um, he clicks in, in Krakow. Well, he can't. Surely he doesn't. He collects in the Baltic, I imagine, because there's zero there. Yeah, so this, we can just let him have that wealth, you know, and embolden him and not worry about it too much. We can't get too much wealth from the um, Baltic to... Where the hell did they come from? Am I seriously that blind? I didn't see them here. The hell? Uh. Yeah, you guys get what I'm saying. We got jibbed there, bad luck. Oh, I feel spam in. With show superiority as well. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Yep. So we're kind of trying to kill our ruler, but uh, I guess I need an ear first.
I only have two raw marriages. Mm. Shoot. I hope I don't regret what I just did. <laughs> How good here. I hope our next year is good stats. What kind of stats does our queen have? 145 is pretty bad. The intention is to have her run the country, so it's pretty bad. And uh, yeah, breaking my alliance with the Commonwealth means uh, the coalition is going to be emboldened that much more, so it's upsetting. But it is what it is. Okay, we don't take this guy. Can I please defeat you, sir? Thank you. Getting pushed around by these fools does not feel good. Damn, we're barely winning that, though. Alright, let's consolidate this up. So that is his capital city. Basically, just trying to piece him out. Ming, <laughs> get away from me, Ming, how rude. Alright, let's go all the way up here to his capital. Blanderin. So, uh, let's talk about something, guys. I wanted to mention something. Most of you probably don't care, but uh, I've sort of spoken about this before. Like, I kind of consider those of you who are into watching this um, a bit of a kind of higher tier of viewers, people who watch the, the daily uploads. Um, you know, I don't want to play favorites, but the reality is that you guys... Uh, you know, because some people don't have the time and so on. I just want to make that clear. Like, some people genuinely don't have the time and stuff like that, uh, which is completely understandable. Um, but, yeah, I just really appreciate you guys that do watch. And uh, I want to mention uh, a lot of people... Uh, I am a chef, by the way, of, like, 10 years experience. Well, I suppose not technically, because uh, I started out as a kitchen hand. But uh, I have 10 years working experience, so let's put it that way, in a kitchen... Um, and I wanted to do a bit of a cooking show. That's something that I've been meaning to do for a long time. Some people still request it in the, in the comments of these videos. And I wanted to basically tell you guys my thoughts. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to do in, in regards to the cooking show, including, I would basically do... really like here's the thing i want i would like a f few different styles that i would kind of employ right and uh one would be like really good but simple food there might be some crossover that's why i'm kind of hesitating between the sort of different themes but um for example pasta now Somebody might be like, oh, pasta's pretty mundane. Like, oh, what fancy ingredients? Crap. Crap! Crap! Our queen! Crap! Okay, let's, uh... I want to try to influence Hungary. We're so poor. God dang it. We're not collecting so much down in the Southeast Asia right now. Ah, oh, no. That's bad. Why did she die? She was 40 years old. The thing is, guys, we, 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 we're not going to get a Habsburg queen now. And I threw away my good air. Uh, it's so annoying. Um, I'm going to try to rule marriage Hungary and hope that we can get it from him. The Habsburg. 
Uh, yeah, so I kind of had like a few different ideas of the theme of, of the video. One would be kind of like uh, making easy food that's nice. I know a lot of people like eat like ramen noodles and stuff like that because they can't afford more. And uh, you'll be surprised, like I was talking about pasta a second ago, you'll be surprised guys, like as I am, as you guys know, a professional chef, some of you would, uh, some people would say that I'm at least, at the very least, that I am the best chef, uh, but not me, because I'm a really humble guy, okay, but uh, some people would say I'm the best, and uh, I could show you guys how to make for example, a pasta with the same basic ingredients, which is beyond comprehensionly good, right? You'd be like, WTF. Like, even me saying it, you're like, huh? Pasta? Well, what, like, what ingredients am I talking about? I'm talking about onions, tomato, pasta, salt, pepper. And you'll be like, well, how can it be good then? Huh? That's the thing. I'll show you. Um, but yeah, another thing, another thing would be like, uh, incredibly, hmm, maybe they're similar, I don't know, I'm brainstorming out loud, but, uh, anyway, Hungarian dishes is another option, but the issue with food, this is food in general, guys, I could talk about it forever, but the thing about food is that, uh, a lot of food nowadays and like chefing in general and so on is kind of, it's been marketing for a long time. It's been business. Like, let's take, for example, Gordon Ramsay. Like, Gordon Ramsay, I'm lagging again. What the hell? Gordon Ramsay is like one of the more famous chefs nowadays. And um, there's a lot of people who are fans of him. Even people, like, I work with people and they're fans of him, the people that I work with. Uh... And I don't want to be the one to disappoint people, to burst their bubble, and they don't... You know, people think, like, well, who are you? Who are you? You know, Gordon Ramsay's rich and famous or whatever, so why should I trust you? But the thing is, guys, I don't even consider Gordon Ramsay to be a very good chef at all. At all. At all. Uh, I think that he's a good businessman, and that's what he's all about. He's made a lot of money, and I don't consider him to be a good chef at all. In fact, uh, he's revealed himself to me many times to be dumb, quite frankly. Uh, and I feel like I have to actually justify that. Like, an example of that is um, I've seen him... Oh, here comes Ming over here. It's okay. We'll get out of this war here, hopefully, in a second. But uh, I've seen him sharpening his li knives, like, scrape, 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 scrape. I can't believe I'm lagging. It's because I'm fighting Ming, I guess. He's walking all the way over here. It's just so depressing how I've got a new PC, a big beastly PC, and this game bloody lags. It's upsetting. It's just poorly optimized game, but it is what it is. It's choppy sometimes. Um, I could actually turn the settings down if I want to, which helps resolve that. But that can't be done until the end of the episode anyway. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, somebody asked him, uh, that's nice, that will give us some money, we're gonna take a third loan out here, it looks like, uh, he said that a steel is for sharpening your blade, and not only has he said that, but he's acted it with his actions, and the thing is, a steel, guys, like a blade, do you guys, can you visualize what I'm saying, shink, 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 you with your blade, uh, that is not for sharpening your blade, and in fact, if even before you go to get like an education or something like that, like in high school, they will, that's a high school school question, like what is the tool, the steel utilized for, and it's for realigning your blade, so if you imagine like, you know, many people know that like gold is soft, right, well, if you imagine your, your blade, like if you have a microscope and you you put it so it's like a pyramid, okay, so you're looking at the sharp point of the blade top, and you're looking at it like a two-dimensional angle, like down the, the blade, if you zoom in closer and closer and closer to the blade, closer and closer, the blade's getting thinner and thinner and thinner, 
right? And even though it's metal, as you get in really, really close, like microscopically, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to dent, but it's very small dents, and it's also going to fold over. Do you understand? So you imagine you have a thin piece of metal. It becomes wavy. Do you see what I'm saying? When pressure comes in from one side, it pushes out, and your steel is for realigning your blade. It's for um, pushing it back in towards the center. It's for scraping pieces of it off, which has been folded over. And it's for actually just taking a small layer of, of steel off of the blade in general, which helps get rid of the uh, the dents. But it, it's not for sharpening. In fact, why do I say that it's a big deal? You might be like, oh, Monk, that's nitpicking. The thing is, guys, I work in the industry and people like, they. my knife has lasted me like uh, nine years and I don't have the kind of money to buy another French knife. Just buy another one. And you have to understand that Gordon Ramsay is so successful in business that he, I guarantee you, he's got one of two things. He has like a rich, like extremely expensive knife, which he probably doesn't really use. It's like a kind of like a hunter's trophy, right? Like up on the wall. And then he has an abundance of knives because he's rich. He's just rich. It's just like, yeah, whatever. It's a knife. It's not a big deal. Do you see what I'm saying? So therefore, he doesn't actually know what it's like to be in the kitchen and to actually value your knives and actually have your take care of your tool and actually have it last like a lifetime, I suppose. And it is actually significant. It's significant to somebody like me who's in the industry and you give your knife to somebody who, it could be a chef who's like come out of a school and they're a big Gordon Ramsay fan and they will actually ruin your knife. If if you um, keep doing that, by the way, you actually usually ra round your knife off. You actually blunt your knife. If you're sitting there recklessly, shink, 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 doing that, you actually blunt the knife, believe it or not. Um... Whereas uh, if you do it much more carefully and meticulously with a whetstone, that's another story. If you're doing very carefully, uh, you know, making sure you're doing it at the right angle and so on, that's how you actually sharpen a knife. But that is an example of how Gordon Ramsay is, he's, uh, yes, he's a successful businessman, blah, blah, blah. We can't quite take this without going over 100%, so I'm just going to wait just a moment. And uh, yes, I understand how people don't care about my opinion because i'm just a plebeian but if you actually take an interest i'll actually explain to you another example was like i saw him make burgers you can do this right now you can uh, go look up gordon ramsay's burgers on youtube this video was like recommended to me and uh, i can say without a doubt without any doubt in my mind that i can make a better burger than that and uh, i guarantee you if if he serves that burger i think he mentions in the video um, I think he mentions in the video that he serves the burger in one of his restaurants. Uh, if you can find a food critic, which is notorious for being, uh, for not caring about, you know, what people, uh, you know, appealing, appealing to, to rich people or whatever. Please give me Queen. Please give me Queen. No! No! I threw away my ear for no reason, guys. God dang it. Sorry. Sorry, fam. I threw away my ear for no reason. Uh, there's one other thing we can do. Let's break... We've got Diplo ideas. Let's break royal marriage with Austria, which only costs us prestige, and that he hates that. But we have enough relations to try to redo it. We can tick up for negative 10. I'm happy to do that. And that gives us 2% uh, pr production. Look at that. Some nice money, which we're desperately in need of. Okay, so I'll try to rule marriage Austria again. But what I was saying that is that uh, I know I realize I'm ranting and apologize if you guys are not interested in this. I'm almost done. But um, if you find a f food critic, guys, which is not interested in basically fellating Gordon Ramsay for his prestige right uh they will poo on that burger i promise you i promise you because it's a bad burger and gordon ramsay he's got his pretentious english accent and he, he's very flavorful with his words and he he seduces plebeians who don't know how to uh, cook or anything like that but the burger is terrible it's a terrible burger it, it there are basically laws guys like when you have 
it's like EU4, they're basic rules, right? And then you expand upon those. It's the same thing with cooking. And like in a basic rule of like cooking is that if you, um, it's actually oxygen that makes things uh, tasty. So for example, if you have a nice cheese, and I'm not talking about like a really pretentious, like nice expensive cheese, I'm just talking about nice cheese. And you, you take a tiny slice of the cheese and you put it in your mouth, if you like cheese, um, that's nice, right? You're like, mmm, cheese. Um, now, if you do the same thing, you take a big bite out of the cheese, like, honk. Um, it's not nice. Do you understand? And uh, the same, it's not just with cheese. It's the same with, for example, uh, salami. That's another example. There's a reason that salami is cut thinly like that. It's for the same reason. If you take a big, you, you somebody might ha uh, have only ever had salami slices, and they take a they they get themselves a proper salami, like a salami roll, and they're like, oh, like look at this, and then they take a big bite out of it, right? Like, oh, this is so nice, like cool, right? And then they're disappointed because they're like, huh. Oh, come on! Give me a queen! Crap! We could probably do it again. We could probably do it one more time with Austria. God! I don't think it works. I don't know. This is so annoying. I want to have the queen, guys. And we need, a, we need an heir now as well. I guess maybe we get a Habsburg if my ruler dies right now. So that would do it. If we don't have an heir and my ruler dies. That would do it. Oh, rip. Austria's like, WTF, why do you do this to me? Okay. Yeah, but back to the food rant. Um, You slice things thinly, taste nice. The reason is, is because the oxygen, it's the same as like wine tasting. If you guys, like my dad is like a expert wine taster. And uh, you, this is why wine tasters slurp their wine. Like... <laughs> Like making disgusting sounds. It's because they're, they're tr they they can uh, wine tasting is all about guessing where the wine's from, its age, its vintage, like blah blah blah, um, from just by tasting the wine, and you get the taste from the oxygen. The oxygen enhances the taste. So when you have a big wedge of meat, it's not uh, as flavorsome. And the reason I mention it is because Gordon Ramsay's burger is a big fat. A burger and if you are a burger connoisseur like i am guys if you're at least the best chef that has ever existed on the planet but also a humble guy then you'll know that thin burgers are where it's at and there's a reason that even fast food restaurants do thin burgers and they do multiple burgers went for like their big it's like oh big fat burger brand that's the burger you buy right God, this is so slow and laggy. It's upsetting. And they'll do multiple patties of thin burgers. If you guys pay attention, this is actually really painfully slow. After this episode, I'm probably going to restart my computer or something to try to uh, sort that out. But it's Ming in particular. I know it is. Anyway, the burger's bad, guys. It's bad. And you can be like, Gordo Ramsay's. <gasps> Yes! Yes! Okay. Okay, worth. Worth. We did it, guys. That's a nice uh, thing to end the episode on. Hopefully after this war as well. The potential to PU the Commonwealth. Wow. Exciting. And uh, many of you thought it was never going to happen because you have no faith. You did not realize that God willed it from the very beginning. Uh, yeah, it's a bad burger. It's a bad burger, guys. It's a bad burger. And uh, Chef R Ramsay, whatever his name is, Gordon Ramsay, should stay in his lane. I'm not saying that I'm better than he is at a chef, be being a chef, guys. That's not what I'm trying to say. There are probably things that he can do, in particular because of his experience, because he's dealt with, uh, what, you know, the wealth that he has, the things that are a bit above me and beyond me, because uh, I, I haven't had that privilege, if you will, of, of dealing with that kind of uh, stature of, 
you know, because it's so expensive, for example. Um, but he should stay in his lane. He makes things and he's like, oh, look, guys, a burger. And it's literally like your dad just winging it. That's literally what it's like. I mean, you might think that's harsh, but it is literally what it's like. It's just like a guy just winging it, like, just like, doo 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 But the thing is, he's Gordon Ramsay, so he does it, and he does it successfully. And people are like, oh, wow, so good, so good, la, la, la. And uh, you can think so good, la, 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 but it's not. It's not. And uh, why did I start ranting about Gordon Ramsay, guys? Oh, yes, because that is food in general. That is food in general. People don't realize it's been like this for years, decades. Like the magazines, the YouTube, uh, whatever, any media is like the real way to make a pasta. The point is there is no real way. There is no real way to make a pasta. There is no real way to make anything. Um, one household in Italy, mama makes it one way, mama makes it another way in another household. And some are better and some are worse, and uh, so people have different tastes, and some would have been completely lost to time, guys. The best pasta ever, and it would have been lost to time. Uh, I'm telling you, some people might think uh, I'm exaggerating or whatever, there is no right way. And sometimes it's actually limiting. So you might think like the traditional way. That's a way. Well, I don't mean the right way to cook, but I mean the traditional way to make the pasta or whatever. But sometimes... Look, man, yeah, the traditional way can be great, but it can also not be. It can be limiting. You can actually do better, but you're stuck in this mindset of doing it the traditional way. Um, and there's other ways to innovate. And uh, I'm basically going on this long rant. The purpose was as a defense mechanism. Um, the, if I do Hungarian food, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are like, that's not the proper way. And there's going to be a lot of people like, that's not the traditional way. And uh, although that might 100% be the case, uh, I can only make it the way that uh, over here in New Zealand, my um, great auntie and my grandfather made it and do my best to replicate that. And uh, yeah, that's all that I can do is, is my best. So a part of me is kind of like hesitant to do that because I know some people will poo poo on it and be like, oh, lame, it's not the proper way. Um, but a part of me really wants to share that kind of thing regardless, because it's really yummy. So there was an epically long rant, and the moral of the story is, uh, but Monk's really uh, the best chef ever and a humble guy. And uh, give me your thoughts, guys. I have a few other concepts, but I'm not feeling very clear in uh, my sort of thought process as it happens. But I, I had a f that was going to be like the, th the theme of the cooking show, is I would do a few different types looks like the lag has gone yeah it's being at war with ming which is painful a few different types within the series of episodes and um the problem is guys that i actually don't have anything that even slightly resembles a good camera right now we've got worse prestige than he does <laughs> Damn it, because I disinherited my ear. God dang it. Looks like we can uh, claim Portugal's throne. So yeah, I know some of you might be hyped. Some of you, the minority, might be hyped for what I was just talking about, guys. But uh, I don't have a good camera. So I don't really know what to do. I f I'd feel a little bit cheeky being like, uh, guys, uh, give me money. Go to my Patreon. Give me money. Um, But yeah. I don't really know what else to say. Like, uh, I, I don't have just an abundance of money lying around to buy a good camera. Uh, far from it. And, um, yeah. So it's either going to be, like, sort of relatively low quality. Because it's not going to be on, like, my computer with all this stuff, my setup. Right? I, I have to actually record it. So, at best, it will be kind of poor quality, I'm sorry to say. Or uh, I'll keep pushing it back until, like, I can afford better equipment. Um, but, yeah. I appreciate you guys, regardless. Thank you for watching. And uh, looks like we have the potential to PU Portugal if I can get some prestige. Screw it. Let's take the yearly prestige. It could make the difference. And uh, maybe the Commonwealth. 
maybe the Commonwealth, which is much more exciting if we can uh, both get an ear and then kill our ruler. Because <laughs> this weak claim is going to be around for a little while, it looks like. So pretty exciting future here, and hopefully it's not ridiculously lag like that if I'm fighting Ming. Oh my goodness, Russia is his tributary state. Or Vassal. No, tributary state. Oh my god, look at this Ming, dude. Tributary, the, the, uh, the Europeans, dude. That's brutal. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.